this week's video. So this week, the first thing I'm going to do is finish off some repointing that I didn't do when I did the kitchen. It's just one small area near the barbecue that I never got a chance to finish off pointing. So I'm going to do it this week. I've also got an end wall that I took off uh, some sort of concrete and I've let the stone breathe. And the plan is now to re-render it just with some lime mortar so that the stone can still breathe. So it's early in the morning, you can hear the birds singing, the sun's out, it's a gorgeous day, but let's get going. And yes, for those eagle-eyed there, there is still a pile of wood here. I still haven't yet moved all the wood. We've had a few rainy days and other priority jobs like the garden, things like that have taken hold. So it's still a pile of wood on our drive, but I'm going to get this moved soon, I swear. So just to go through some of the equipment I have. So this is the lime that I'm using. And also we need watering cans, lots of water, a bucket, some safety gear, a wheelbarrow, a spray to spray your walls and some trowels. And of course, the most important thing, a cement mixer. <laughs> So, so there we are. I've now finished half the wall. I've got the other half to do. It was a, quite a difficult wall because there was quite a big gap. So I had to really push in the mortar and also find stones to fit into the holes and things like that. But I'm going to clear up a, a little bit now, have some lunch, and then I'll come back and brush this down before I start on the second half. So there we are, I've now got this whole side done. Yeah, it was a bit of a pain because there was quite a lot of big holes I had to fill. Now obviously I use my hands to sort of squeeze it in. Some people use a trowel. To be honest with you, I find it takes me longer with a trowel, whereas with my hands I can prod and poke and get that mortar right into the gap. So I personally use my hands and I also quite like the effect that it gives as well. So. This is now done, but in the meantime, I've got a little bit of mortar left, so I'm going to try and finish or start at the other wall as well. So for this wall, basically, instead of repointing, I'm going to actually kind of completely cover the stones and kind of render it, basically. So I'm just going to cover everything, but I think because some of the gaps are quite small, I might have to put one coat on and then come back and then put a sort of another coat to kind of level it off. So that's the plan. So now I've got to get going. So as you can see, I've now sort of rendered half of the wall with what I've got left. It's now about four o'clock. It's going to be too late for me to do another batch and finish the wall. So I'm going to leave it for today, but also it'll allow me to sort of dry so that when I come over back for this side, I can hopefully fill it in a little bit and level it off a little bit. But then again, I may not. I quite like this rustic look as well. So we'll decide that a bit later. But I'm really happy with that. It looks really, really good. I'm just a bit gutted that I didn't get the uh, second half done. But now to the fun, exciting bit of clearing up. I borrowed the cement mixer from my neighbour. So uh, I've got to make sure it goes back pristine clean so that I can uh, borrow it again one day. Hi. 
I'm here at the chicken coop because unfortunately one of our chickens has died. Poppy, which is the black chicken, unfortunately she died. We believe that she had some sort of bowel cancer. She wasn't looking very well. We tried to kind of keep an eye on her, look at her. She had diarrhea. We took her to the vets and unfortunately the vets did a series of tests and x-rayed her and things like that and by all accounts it looked, looked like bowel cancer. So we had to put her down and although chickens are there to lay eggs and we love have eaten their eggs, because we let them loose into our garden they're also quite like pets and Poppy in particular was very, very friendly and she always sat there and let us stroke her and things like that. So it's really a bit of a shame and we never like to see any life being lost. But we're now down to four chickens and uh, all we can do is look after them best we can. But I thought I'd better share the news of the loss of our chicken that we've had this week. So here we are a couple of days later and as you can see the lime mortar now has dried and when it's dried it's obviously got a lot whiter so it now matches the uh, lime mortar that I did on the other walls. So I'm really happy with this, it's added a lot of extra strength to the wall. Previously as you could see there was lots of holes and things like that so by filling it up with stones and mortar and, and things it's added strength but I'm really happy with the final look as well. The one thing I would say is that make sure, I obviously mentioned right at the beginning of the video, to wear gloves because it's quite nasty stuff, the lime. And while I was doing it, I was wearing shorts and I had my knees exposed. And my wife even said to me, are you sure you don't need knee pads? And I said, no, no, I'm fine. I'm just kneeling on the tarpaulin. But of course, as I was doing it, I ended up kneeling on some lime and my knee started stinging and I thought, oh, what's that? And I kind of ignored it. It carried on stinging. And anyway, by the end of the day, when I did actually get to wash it, wash all the lime off, I noticed that my knees were really, really hurting and really stinging. And since then, they've kind of scabbed over and everything else and kind of created little scabs. So actually, the sort of acid in the lime was obviously just burning away at my skin. So it just shows how nasty the stuff is. So absolutely, if you're gonna be using lime mortar, make sure gloves, knee pads, or wearing trousers or something like that, just don't let it touch your skin. And if it does touch your skin, make sure you wash it off. And the second rule is uh, always listen to your wife, which I never do, but there we are. So that's it for this week's video. Um, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm just here in the garden and enjoying the weather, but also there's a, I've noticed there's lots and lots of crows around at the moment, making a lot of noise. And we've just had a uh, buzzard swirling around in the sky. So I think also the uh, buzzards are obviously trying to get to the crows' nests and we've seen lots of aerial flights with the crows trying to scare away the buzzards, which I've tried to capture it on camera, but it hasn't really worked because they move so fast, it's quite difficult to capture them. But anyway, that's it. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you get notified of future videos. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers, guys. Bye.